Hi YouTube, welcome to my channel. For those who are returning, it's good to have you back. I'm Shababs and in this third part of our video series, we're going to be connecting our MacPow X3 Pro 10 Watt Module Laser Engraver. We're going to go over every single detail about installing the driver and the program to get you going. And if you haven't seen the unboxing, below is a YouTube link. Also, if this video becomes too long, we might have to make a fourth video. Before we continue, remember this is not only an unbox but also a tutorial channel. What you might know, others might not know so keep the comments polite so we might all benefit from each other and without further ado let's get started <laughs> X3 Pro engraving machine can be used for engraving on a variety of materials including wood, acrylic, leather, bamboo, fabric, stainless steel and more. A problem most people have is choosing what program to use or how user friendly the program is. For starter, this engraver is compatible with Laser Gerbil, a software for Windows only, and also Lightburn for Windows and Mac operating system. Lightburn isn't free, however, you can download it and you get a one month trial, but after that, you have to pay. With Laser Gerbil, you can import vector files and bitmap image files, for example, JPEG, PNG, etc. But with Lightburn, you have support for more formats like AI, SVG, and more. For those just starting out and as general knowledge for any laser engraver, it's better to use a vector file because it's faster than the dot creation method used for bitmap images. But definitely, it's all going to depend on you. You can find many free vector designs online and use programs like Inkscape or QCAD to create them. Additionally, you can download free vectors or just buy unique designs from sites like Etsy to enhance your work. So to download the software, the first thing you have to do is go to lasergerbil.com slash download. In lasergerbil, there are some tabs at the top, home, download, usage, support, build, buy, FAQ, contacts. Go to download and there are two options. The first is directly download the latest version or you can choose to download a specific version. If you choose the second option, you'll be able to search for the specific version you want. The good thing is that Laser Gerbil is always updating the software. In our case, we're going to download the latest version. Now we have to go back to our engraver, connect the engraver to your computer via the USB cable supplied, insert the key and turn it clockwise till it's aligned with the green spot. Turn the emergency clockwise, press the power switch and check the indicator light on the top of the laser model. Note that the laser head is ready to work when the light is on. If the light is off, try reconnecting the laser cable or the power adapter. Once the Laser Gerbil software has been downloaded, we open to install. The Windows antivirus automatically shows a pop-up confirming it has detected an unrecognized tab. We click on more information and you should be able to see the option to run the program anyway. The installation process starts. Choose where to install it. It's preferable to create a shortcut on the desktop. Click next until this process is complete. It's quite fast and once done, it opens automatically. Then a disclaimer pops up read it we're gonna skip this for a second so as not to waste your time but we will talk about the safety precautions at the end of the video once you understand the do's and don'ts check the box to accept the conditions click accept and the program opens automatically in case it doesn't open the software icon must be on the desktop and you can open it directly from there the version i have installed already has some improvements there's no need to install additional buttons let's proceed first to recognize some icons that we're going to be working with here, where it says COMM, is basically the port where you connect the laser to the PC or laptop. If you don't see the COM with a the number, then you're basically not connected. We're going to connect the USB cable to the USB input of the laser and the computer. Go ahead and turn on the laser with all the safety features it has. When connecting the laser, you should hear a sound indicating that the laser is connected. But in this case, there's no sound. In such cases, you should check if the machine is connected to the computer first. Also check if the lock key is turned off. And after all this has been confirmed, we can go back to the software and click on connect. 
One thing you should take into consideration while your laser is on, always make sure you have your lenses at hand. These here are the goggles that originally came with the laser. Something I really like about the Mechpo is this. Plus the laser head as an extra shield. In other words, it's two layers of protection plus all the buttons on the laser board. But I bought this other goggles separately because more than anything, I can easily confirm the certification and the allowed wavelength. We turn on our laser and you should now hear a sound which indicates that the laser is now active. This can be confirmed because it now shows COM port number 7. This number varies depending on the laptop or PC where you're connected to. Right here below we can see the buttons are not yet activated. This is because we have not really activated the software. Sometimes it may even be possible that a program does not recognize the laser. Either you don't hear the initial sound or no buttons is activated, in which case you have to install the driver. An important information before installing the driver, you must make sure that you have the laser turned on and connected to your computer via the USB cable before starting the driver to avoid possible errors. To install the driver, first go to tools select install ch340 driver a pop-up will appear click install and when the installation is finished click ok exit the pop-up if you want you can just close the program and then log back in you can also try downloading the driver through the MacPower page link just go to makepowercom slash pages slash driver dash files go to help center at the bottom Look for the download center. Now we go to driver file. Choose one of the options provided depending on if your laptop or PC works with a Windows, Mac or Linux OS. Theoretically, for Windows users, if you're using a system below Windows 10, you'll probably need to install the driver manually. If you're using a Windows 10 system or above, there's no need to install the driver. We do the same as in the previous processes. To install the driver from MacPow, we open the downloaded driver, select to install CH340 driver, a pop-up appears with the installed driver, we click install, click OK when the driver installed successfully. Now we return to the laser gerbil software. Go to the COM port and click on this green icon. Now you should hear a sound indicating that your laser has now been recognized and you should see the button panel down here below is activated. Let's check out the icons on the taskbar at the top. Gerbo is where we can configure some things. File is where we import our images, but you can also do that in file name. Generate, colors, previews. Language is where you might want to go first to change the language. And of course, install where we can update the software. Once the program is installed, driver updated, and it has been recognized by the computer, you might want to add extra button functions, which can be quite useful. If you want to add additional buttons, which I think is not necessary with this version, but if by chance you need additional buttons, go to the Laser Gerbil page, then Usage tab, then Custom Buttons. Here you see everything about buttons, the type of buttons and what you use them for. We go down to where it says Download and download the file. Once downloaded, without extracting the Custom Buttons file, we look back in the Laser Gerbil software. In this tab here below, the taskbar, right click then import custom buttons look for the file wherever you have it downloaded and then add the button before we continue some other important settings need to be made go to gerbil then settings then raster import make sure that the first box pwm support is selected then click save then we go to gerbil again then settings and to line 32 we confirm that the laser mode enable has a value of 1. If it does not have this value, select it and press right to change the value and then close. Now we're all set. To start working with the laser, you need to understand these icons here below. First, we have this button, which is to home the laser. This one here helps you lock the laser module. This one here helps you establish a new home for the laser module. This here is used to turn on laser for focusing and this here is the frame to preview the engraving range and adjust the engraving position. To start with an engraving, go to open file and select a file. After opening the image, there is a pop-up where you see image parameters. In image parameters, we can adjust the sharpness, brightness, contrast, 
and highlight as well as other attributes of the target image, the effect will be displayed in the right preview window. In conversions too, people usually choose line-by-line -line tracking and 1-bit dithrain. 1-bit dithrain is more suitable for engraving grayscale graphics. If you're cotton, select vector graphics or centerline engraving mode. The engraving quality essentially refers to the line width of the laser scan. This depends mainly on the laser spot size of the engraving machine. It's recommended to use an engraving quality range of 5 to 8. And logically, the higher the quality, the longer it will take. But it will be much better defined for good quality. At the bottom of the preview window, there are other things that can be done. For example, rotate the image, mirror, auto crop, etc. After completing the above settings, click next and another pop-up opens where we can adjust the speed, power and engraving size. In engraving speed, you can increase or decrease the speed according to your preference depending on the material that you're engraving. A faster speed will save engraving time but may reduce the engraving effect. A slower speed will have the opposite effect. In laser options, there are two modes for laser, M3 and M4. It's recommended to use M4 command for one bit engraving and M3 command for other cases. Also, as general knowledge, M3 is for constant same intensity and M4 is for variable power. Choose the engraving power according to different materials between 0%, which is the minimum, and 1000 or 100%, which is the maximum. Finally, set the size you want to engrave. If you activate outer size, this is done automatically. Better to use this if you know exactly what you're doing. Otherwise, measure what you're gonna engrave and manually write it in the boxes. When you're done, click the Create button. Now we're gonna stop here a little and talk about the safety precautions of the MacPow, which also applies to all laser engravers and also the softwares used. Laser processing can be risky and users should carefully consider whether the object to be processed is suitable for laser work. This machine uses a class 4 high power laser radiation which may cause ignition of surrounding flammable materials during laser processing other radiation and toxic and harmful gases may be produced depending on the object being processed. Direct exposure to laser radiation can cause harm to the human body. When using the MegPow in this case make sure it's always monitored. If you have to leave cut off all power to prevent any unforeseen issues and in case any abnormal situation occurs, immediately cut off power. Place the engraver in a fireproof area with good ventilation. It's recommended to have a fire extinguisher nearby in case of emergencies. Do not use reflective or diffuse objects in the machine as laser reflection in the human body may cause health problems. And do not place any living organisms under the laser emission. If you're photosensitive, stay away from lasers. Also wear laser safety glasses when operating the machine. If you want to purchase additional goggles, get goggles with wavelength protection between 400 to 445 nanometers. Have an outer diameter of another plus 5 and meet a minimum L5 level. Unfortunately, this is as far as we're going to go for now. For those who are only interested in software activation, I hope this video has been helpful to you and has given you enough information about how to install and use the laser gerbil software, especially with the MacPow X3 Pro 10 watt laser. If you're interested in knowing more about it, how to use the Wi-Fi mode, use the rotary and other features, you can click on the link below or on the end screen to access the next part. I appreciate your time watching this video. Let me know what you think about the MacPower or if you already have any experiences you would like to share, leave them all down below in the comment section. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button to receive a notification every time we upload new videos. Thank you for watching and as always, catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.